It's truly a privilege and a pleasure to welcome Dr. Shankar Goenka to the studios of Akashvani. He's an author, he's a coach, he's a motivational speaker, he's a master trainer. I can go on and on to describe him, but I do not have that much of time. I'd rather concentrate on extracting more out of his voice than keep describing him. First of all, a formal welcome to the studios of Akashvani. Thank you very much, sir. It is an honor and privilege. Since my childhood, we've been listening to Akashvani. And I feel so honored and with due regard and respect, I feel extremely honored to be part of this program. And thank you so very much for inviting me to this beautiful, lush green, so well-maintained and an ancient building to be part of this. Thank you You're very You're most much. welcome. Uh, the purpose of this interaction is uh, twofold. Knowing you as a person and using your rich experience, your, your rich varied experience for the benefit of listeners. And mind you, many of these listeners would be young people who must be at various stages of their careers, looking at higher education or skill development, looking for jobs to lead a better life. Mm -hmm. So let me begin with the first question that comes to mind, you've mentioned a typical phrase, training the mind. Is the mind something that can be trained at all? I feel training is at most important. I remember my childhood. All I got training from my father. And what I strongly believe, learn what you say. They learn on what you do. Hmm. So your training starts first at your home. Then you go to school. Then you go to college. And whatever you see from the circumstances, whatever you see from your surroundings, whatever you see things which are happening around us, your brain get tuned to it. As I went further to my studies and I worked with my mentor, Dr. Kubis, I'm going to speak to you later. Hmm. Then I say, for example, creativity. People hmm. say it is by birth. So Dr. Kubis used to say creativity can be learned and creativity can be taught. In the same way, I feel your brain is so much of power which can light a bulb of 40 watt. Unfortunately, we use only 4% of our brain energy hmm. and we waste 96% of our brain energy. So it is not hypnosis. Basically, what we help children, the youth and the senior people, what we got to know is that we all behave differently. Why? Because we think differently. And why we think differently? Because we are all wired differently. So when we are born, we are born with different situations, circumstances. And as we grow in life, we grow it with a different pace situation, circumstances and surroundings. So what I strongly believe that you can always train your brain. And as you see from our Bhagavad Gita, what it says, it says you are what you think. So it means I strongly believe that you can always train your brain. Sir. No, but can't one, you know, go astray doing a lot of wishful thinking in that case? Yeah, why not? So wishful thinking also for that you need to First of all, you need to accept it that yes, I can do it. In life, 90% of people surrender when they're 80% about to uh, reach their goal. Why it happens? Because their brain reject it or accept it. Hmm. You see, there are so many inventions happen. There is hmm. so many things happens around us. How it happens? In Hindi, if you hear this, ki man ke hare haar hai, hmm. or man ke jeete jeet. So what is this? Your brain accept it or it reject it. For example, you like someone. Now your brain accept that you are liking someone. Hmm. So you see everything green around it. The minute you dislike someone, you see all negativity in that person. So how hmm. it happens? It's again acceptance hmm. by your brain your thinking, the way you give command to your brain. So, for example, I speak on happiness. So, what is happiness? Happiness is all within. You choose to be happy or you choose to be unhappy. Why? Because we think we wish to be positive, but we think negative. No, but I'll interrupt you there. If you talk about happiness, but if you look at it from a reality point of view, isn't sadness also a part of human life? Yes, it is very important. So why focus on... No, why focus on happiness? Because mm. happiness and sadness is never permanent. You get something, you're happy. You lose something, you become unhappy. But how you go up in your life, you have to be positive in life. So many people ask me, Dr. Goenka, when we hear you, we feel positive. As time goes, our temperature comes down. So how to be positive in life? Mm. I said, do two things. Number one, read self-help book. And number two, be in the company of positive people. In our surrounding, if you see the atmosphere, you see the news, you see so many things around us. If you keep on thinking, if you keep on seeing, if you keep on listing negative things, you are bound to see negative. And you are doing 10 good things. One negative news comes and all of a sudden those 10 things goes down and one negative trigger it 
and it makes the whole atmosphere negative same around the discussion hmm. if you are having a discussion at akashwani you hmm. have so many discussion you see when people are speaking positive language everyone speaks positive around that the minute one person speaks negative all of a sudden the whole atmosphere becomes negative and people start negative around it so it has to do so much with your brain and with your thinking and with your attitude dr goenka if you permit i would like to ask you a rather personal question But yes, it's connected with the texture of uh, our conversation today. You've been a sign of a well-known, accomplished business family of India. Was there a personal trigger why you choose to chart out your life on your own, leaving everything? What? I mean, who does it? To be honest with you, since you said it is person, hmm. so it is definitely do with person. In business terms, I was doing very good. One of a loyal and a... Uh, loud son of my father but in 10 september 2006 i came back from a business trip and as i was walking into my home i could hear my son parth and daughter radhika speaking to each other hmm. parth was saying to my daughter ki didi please papa ko samjhana ki main badmash nahi hu me didi please tell papa that i am not naughty the only hmm. thing i do is i am not organize myself hmm. but i love him so much and it changed my whole life why because when parth was young hmm. he never saw his father in me He used to come back from a school. He used mm. to start throwing books somewhere, shoes somewhere, copy somewhere, mm. and he used to make a lot of noise. And my daughter Radhika, when she used to come back from a school, mm. she used to put books properly, shoes properly, copies properly. So every time when I used to go to parents' meeting or a social engagement or anywhere, I used to say, "Meri beti bhot achhi." Means my daughter is very good. Why? Mm. Because she put the books properly, shoes properly, copies properly. And my son Parth, from his childhood. he always heard that he is naughty 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 okay. and at a point okay. came he started believing that he is naughty we were living in the same home hmm. but we are two different people okay that changed my life that was the point in my time i realized it's good to make money it's good to add industries every year but what is the point if you are not good at home that changed my life so it took me one month to introspect it took me one month to have a courage and go to my father and say dad i don't want to be an industrialist and he says what do you want to do i said dad i want to be a teacher he said get lost and i left my home and he gave me a condition hmm. you must leave home as it is where it is basis okay. so i was in a shirt and pant a shoe pair and 100 rupees in my pocket and that's how i left my home on 10th october 2006 and i started a new career anyone who listens to this story would be inspired you been an advisor at the national skill development corporation we'd like to know what was your role there because you are a lot into human relationships so is there any connection between skill development and human relationship i strongly believe sir ki hunar to hum sab mein hai kisi ka chhap jata hai aur kisi ka chhup jata hai so everyone has a talent the only point is is that talent is getting into the right hand is he learning the set quality like for example students today's time they learn engineering now if you ask them why they are learning engineering because no because my father says my sister says my mother says my teacher says the my chacha says hmm. so they get into after that they regret you see lot of students getting into iits and all that after hmm. few months they say no we are not meant for it and you see why so many people becoming sent nowadays because they see different skill into them so when i was on national skill development corporation board my responsibility was the indian talent not only should work only in india indian talent is also required so much into foreign outside so i was responsible for international division so where i was helping the required skill should be identified into india so for example foreign country there is so much a shortage of manpower hmm. especially post covid so now what happens they required nurses so earlier if you see indian job means the blue collar job whether it's in middle east or these countries but you seen last 10 15 20 years lot of white collar jobs has been created mm. so now there is so much of requirement in foreign countries of indian talent you see in israel now what happened 1000 people are going in canada there is so much a shortage of nurses all over the world there is acute shortage of nurses and indian nurses are so much in demand for every skill set india is in demand so anywhere in the world you go people hear about india 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 it's such a great aura mm. around india so that was my responsibility and that's what i was uh, doing it there that helping indian talent going outside and creating wonders out of there so we created a module we created a program hmm. that it is going there not only as a job you are also representing your country so it is very important for a person that who is going to other country he should carry the name and fame of the country that was one area which i focus upon i'll now touch upon a 
grassroots question you are also an educationist you are aiding lesser privileged children to study and go ahead can you give me an example of any success story that somebody who really struggled and achieved something there is not one there are many many stories you can call it a success story but i feel that is part of my life responsibility because again har pratibha avsar ke bina bekar everywhere there is a talent So you know, at this ashram of ours, where we adopted fifty children, hmm. and we adopt a child when he or she is three year old, hmm. no parent or a single parent. So we have them, we make them study. So hmm. they go to good schools, not a five star schools, but where there is a good education is given to them. They participate in each and every sports. They do hmm. all yoga, and then they study there. They are with us for twenty two years. Now over the last ten twelve years, we have given three doctors to the nation and many C A C S engineers to the nation out of that ashram. Oh, wonderful! In that place, the, our source of revenue, we don't take any donation. We have a naturopath, Ayurved meditation center. Whatever money comes out of that, it gets spent on our children. So even the children who are with us, they understand the value of money. They understand what the value of ethics and values in their life. And if you meet our children, I can guarantee you, sir, the children who stays with so-called with their parents, compared mm. to them, you don't find any lesser values and ethics in our children. And I extremely feel proud and happy about it, sir. and the second story we did is like when i got into teaching and training i understood there is so much of trust deficit in the society there is so much of negative discussion around the society so i started working with couples because you know when you do counseling so earlier i was doing with children and then i was doing with you know senior people then all of a sudden i got a call and he said dr goenka i heard you speak very well me and my family me and my wife want to come and counsel with you but i says I don't do a family counseling. He said, "No, no, no, no. You are lying because <laughs> I was saying my true story." And he said, "No, no. You are such a good speaker. We must come and counsel with you. And with your blessings, when they came to us, <laughs> they are about to have a divorce. And with this small intervention, they came out of it. Oh. And I got a new line that, huh. oh man, you can help here also. And last few years, we were able to save about sixty divorces. And you know, it is such a good feeling that you know someone is living happily. And also, I realized it was not a matter of big, big things. It was a matter of very small, small things where they were struggling. You make a bridge, everything is sorted. So I strongly believe we all need to learn bridges, not walls. And this is the work, you know, area where I look to work and contribute for society, sir. Very well said. I'd like to begin with Dr. Kobus Neetling. I want you to describe him as a person, as a teacher. So. If you see my first mentor is my father Dr Kubas so I always believe in our life ek dharm ke guru ek karm ke guru to my father dharm ke guru jo mere karm ke guru rahe that is Dr Kubas Neeting so I was a marwadi I have a going ka name on my side no one took me serious that I am going to teach here because everywhere I go they say oh you are going ka it means you are making money what is relation between education and wealth there is no connection between saraswati and lakshmi I said no no I am serious about it So to be honest with you I got my first training assignment after 3 years and that too I got only 1000 rupees for mm. teaching it 4 hours in a school when I was learning under Dr Kubasnit this was in South Africa yeah he is a South African he is the one who works on a brain research a split brain research and he is a creative guru he is a very known personality mm. worldwide so when i met him and i started talking to him so he gave me the program called whole brain thinking okay. and i started working on that he worked on a research which won nobel award in 1981 so it is called split brain research it okay. says we have left and right brain right brain people think differently and behave differently in the same way left brain so right brain is a picture brain and left brain is a verbal brain means right brain sees a picture put that picture to the left brain and left brain says hello ram how are you he also discovered that right and left brain speak to each other for 60000 times in a day but we use only 4% of our brain energy when i ask for brain energy it came comes out of this research only so then brain divided into four parts and then into eight dimensions so he is a guru of creating eight dimensions so i learned out of him and he is the one who taught me shankar you are a born teacher i said you know dr kubas i never taught in my life he says but i could see i could see your body language your voice modulation and, and you are able to connect with your people he made me speaker and you know he gave me so many things so many lessons so mm. many stories around me he made me a trained practitioner he has given me the highest award of south africa and i feel very honored that you know he always says you know one person who will carry my torch is shankar goenka and it is a matter of extreme proud and privilege sir dr goenka let me conclude with two of your books one is right on the table top here very smart parents rediscover decide and deal with gen next which is a very universal topic these days Nowadays. the other book that is in the pipeline is my father is better than me both titles are very very catchy if you take the lcm of both these books what have you based them on so sir or a 
period of 16 years what i learned in my life is there are only two top professions in this world teaching and parenting rest is all window dressing so what i realize is as i see my father when we grew it was not only about money in spite of having money we brought up in a very conservative atmosphere and the way our father taught us i feel in today's time that parenting is missing so it made me to think that how you can be a parent so many times they say nahi bachcha meri sunta nahi children don't listen to me they don't do like this and we struggled so much now i feel parenting is all about storytelling so in these books it is written that how you nurture your children from the time they are born because when the child is born the cycles are different mm-hmm. children between 0 to 4 mm-hmm. are different 4 to 9 are different 9 to 14 are different 14 to 18 are different and above 18 they are different so it says how you nurture your children at different age groups it was written by dr kubers and uh, madam rashi rutherford she just passed away few days back and then my second book that my father is better than me now what i realize that in today your journey, father was a padma bhushan yeah so my father you know when i see him my father is he is a person who could see tomorrow me she could see what is going to happen so he and second thing he was very polite very humble anyone coming into him he used to make sure that he eats food at home and you know he go there my mother is to even to 12 o'clock in the night if someone comes my mother to make sure that you know she makes a food uh, for them hmm. and it was very inspiring for me at that age i didn't realize and used to say pauji what is this ma ko you disturb at 12 o'clock in the night 10 o'clock in the night and dad you do this and bauji you do this but now i realize ki how much value he has added in our life that time few used to think looks tough but now we look that you know it is very important just to tell you narrate this and make it small and to end the story so i used to study in pilani and i used to go back to my home and i used to tell my elder brother vijay bhaiya bhaiya i want to see movie he said no 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 dad don't allow man ka then what is the point you are our brother Hmm. you need to create a plan so those days movie used to be in two ways before interval after interval hmm. and used to go with a ticket so what is to do in the first show is to go so hmm. when i used to go to shop my dad used to ask Where is Vijay? Hmm. I said, Bauji, you must have gone to the market. And he used to see the first half of the movie and he used to come back out with the second ticket, huh. the cut copy for the second. I used to see the second half of the movie. Huh. We used to have a gap of three, four days. Then again, I used to see the first part of the movie. And hmm. after interval, my brother, that was the time we grew up like this. Now for today's generation, to understand this is very difficult. So my message through Akash Vani is each one of us needs to learn the importance of parent. What message I want to give to the youth is, guys, please remember, as you grow up, your parent don't want your money. Parents have learned to give you money all the time. They'll never demand money out of you. The only thing they expect from you is the respect. When you go back to your home, go and hug your mother, mm-hmm. go and hug your father. Ask them, dad, how are you? Mom, how are you? Make them understand at least once in 15 days or in a month or once in two months ki what i am today i am because of you believe me guys you will get aashirwad from them they will touch you and the only message to all of you is learn to respect your parents and believe me guys you will value your parents once they go if you see me today as i am speaking to you with the grace of god i have everything but my parents are not there to whom i miss every minute every moment of my life well on that heartwarming rather poignant note dr shankar goenka thank you very much for sparing time to come to the studios of akashvani and actually this was a master class in relationship management if i may call it so thank you very much thank you very much and sir believe me i feel extremely honored and privilege of mine to be speaking from bapu studio from where mahatma gandhi spoke for the first time from the studio thank you honored, very much sir. Thank, thank you very you. much